a common curse. Maybe things get bad before they get worse. I don't want to. Hello and welcome to Old Faithful. I'm your host, Matt Trask. My thanks to Hagerty's Music Works. My thanks to the incomparable Johnny Hastings, as all behind the two cameras. Uh, please drink some Black Hills Blend coffee. Wash your hands. Social distance. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Zach Conger. How's it going? Pretty good. How How's are you? I'm doing well. Having a good day. You are the second to the last member of the band Camp Comfort. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't understand what you mean by that. The second to the last? That I feel. Oh, oh yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. You've all been on here? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> everybody but Joel. I'm, uh, I mean, I knew that. I've watched all of them. <laughs> <laughs> they were terrific. I watched Kevin's because I couldn't not see it when it came up in my feed. But uh, I didn't see the other ones at all. Now I have to go. Sure. I did go looking through your YouTube channel, though. Oh. And I couldn't, I only saw Kevin's and like James Dittman and oh. uh, Trap Kit. Sure. But I didn't see the rest of you guys. I guess. Old Faithful, guilting fans one fan at a time. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> So you are the drummer, and we're going to talk about that, yeah. but why don't you just go ahead and dive right in and tell us about you, starting with, your your name is Zach Conger, please tell us your dad's name is King. No, no. I wish. Dang it. All right. King Conger's actually my PSN name, though, oh. <laughs> playing online video sure. games. Sure, okay. <laughs> but, uh, so what do you mean, tell me about, where do you want me to start? Like, well, your, your musical, musical influences, stuff, stuff like okay. that. Okay, yeah. so uh, growing up in my house, we, you know, had... A bookshelf over here full of CDs and a bookshelf over here full of records. My parents were huge music listeners. Okay. Funny enough, no one in my family plays music at all <laughs> or an instrument at all, but uh, we grew up all loving music and that was like our main form of entertainment, not as much TV as some families. Right. And uh, my mom and dad had a very diverse musical taste from, you know, Johnny Cash, uh, Kiss, Metallica, Slayer. Um, all kinds of hip hop, <clears throat> stuff like that. So, pop music, rock, metal, everything. You know what I mean? That so, is very diverse. <laughs> very diverse. Yeah. Yes, that, that's that's why my music taste is so diverse as well. Sure. Uh, I started playing drums when I was about eight or nine years old. I got a drum kit. I joined band. Funny enough, Johnny Hastings' mom was my band teacher uh -huh. for uh, fifth grade and then through middle school. Um, so you learned correctly. Yeah, I did actually. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, I mean. <laughs> I was not like the perfect student or anything, but I definitely loved playing drums, but I always wanted to be in a band, you know what I mean? Sure. Not in band, but in right. a band. In a band. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, my, like, funny enough, my biggest influence was watching some kind of monster documentary about Metallica. Oh. Uh, Lars Ulrich. I was a huge Metallica fan. Okay. When I watched it, I realized, holy crap, that's a lot of drama, and that guy's a huge uh, jerk. Or douchebag, I guess, if I could say that. But right. Yeah, Lars Ulrich. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be like him anymore, but I still want to be in a band. Oh, oh, okay. You didn't want to be like Yeah, yeah. Lars and I'm like, Ulrich. oh, okay. God. Yeah, after I saw that, I'm like, wow, this guy really does suck. All the rumors are true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I still Lars, loved... you're welcome on the show. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but uh, I still loved playing music and wanted to be in a band really bad. I ended up joining a punk rock band when I was about... 15, I believe. Okay. Called the Parasites. I played drums for that. All with right. A couple of kids from my high school, um, and another guy that was our bassist that was just like a homie, but he was older than us and out of school. Uh, we'd go underage, drink at his house, and party and stuff, and practice and, for a band. And then um, we did that for about three years, I believe. Yeah. After that, I started drumming for a metalcore band, and I had never done anything as technical as that. Right. I mean, I had done some jazz stuff and you know punk, but punk is so simplified and easy to get into that's mm -hmm. why I took that first chance went into metalcore drumming for like a four-year stint with a band called the Grave Regard which was okay. really fun um, I thought it was really cool I still love heavy music like that but I don't listen to it as much uh, then after that fell apart our guitarist kind of just disappeared we went into his room because we all lived in the same house actually oh, five okay. of us in a five bedroom house right and we practiced every day and like I was a lot more fit then we'd work out together and eat healthy and stuff mm -hmm. we were like obsessed with this metal band um, but our guitarist just disappeared one day. All of his stuff out of his room and everything. It was kind of a dramatic situation. And I was like, all right, I'm not doing the band thing for a while. So uh, I got a guitar. 
Um, it wasn't this guitar at the time. It was like a crappy Johnson from like, it was like a hundred bucks somewhere. Sure. I don't remember where, but okay. it was a black one. It was cool, but I played that. I learned how to, you know, play basic chords. That's about where I still am. I'm not a guitar virtuoso or anything. I just like singing and writing songs. Uh, but I got this one shortly after I actually got it from Johnny here. Um, financed it through Haggerty's music. Shout out. Uh, <laughs> the nation's largest independent Taylor retailer. Yep, 100%. are so proud of that. And we're proud of it, I'm too. proud of it, too. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. It's in my town. So <laughs> let's go back before we start okay. this. Yes. There was so much and well done. Sorry, yeah. No, no, that was great. That was, so you, you grew up and you spent most of this time mm -hmm. in Rapid City. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yep. And I think you've answered this question. I was, I was going to try and edge you to the story of you laying on the floor listening to Slayer with your mom and dad uh -huh. and saying, hey, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. But it apparently came from a documentary. Um, well, that was part of it. My dad, let's actually, I guess we can get into that. My dad was really obsessed with me playing drums. Oh. He really wanted me to, yeah. Okay. So, like, because I, I would always have, like, pillows out on the sofa while he was, like, playing all this music in the house or whatever, while mm -hmm. making dinner or whatever, and I'm always, like, playing to it badly, of course, at the time. Pillow but, drums. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> and I was always banging on stuff and, right. you know, tapping my legs and right. stuff like that. And uh, my dad just wanted me to play drums. So I believe it was a little bit after Christmas one year. Uh, my dad got me a drum kit at the time. Uh, my mom was pretty upset because we weren't super financially stable or anything. Oh, <laughs> but okay. He got me a drum kit and I came home and it was in my bedroom all set up and I was super excited. Uh, my mom eventually became the more excited one. My dad uh, kind of fell off into the background eventually, but my mom was very supportive in oh, all cool. of my music stuff. She actually came to like every show I ever played until <clears throat> I think she, probably a little bit before I joined Camp Comfort. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. She was at like every show. So wow. Super supportive. Very awesome. Uh, yeah. And so I guess. My parents always wanted me to play music. My brother and sister always had a chance, too. They were in band at okay. different times, but they didn't continue with it. It just wasn't sure. for them, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. So, and then going to the metalcore band, yep. uh, that's one of the pitfalls of being in a metalcore band is occasionally some member of the band will just vanish. <laughs> yeah. And you saw from that video that life in a metalcore band could be dramatic. Oh, yeah. You should have understood in that. In any band, it can be dramatic. Right. Uh, yeah. If anyone is in a band, they know that, and that's just a fact of being in a band. It, it is. <laughs> it truly is. It's so a relationship. let's get on to this. How long have you had it? Uh, I've had this for about, what, three years, four years now? Okay. I'm not certain. Johnny, do you remember when I got this guitar? I don't know. Four years, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Four years. And so I got this shortly after I decided I was going to start playing solo music and writing songs mm -hmm. and stuff. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, I love it a lot. It's uh, like the lowest end tailor you can get, but I didn't have a lot of money at the time, and I financed it and eventually paid it off, and uh, I love it. Well, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with it Yeah, at I'm all. not a techie guy. I don't know, like, details and stuff, so, like, I'm just... I'm, <laughs> I'm just a music lover trying to play music with musicians. You and know that I mean? is absolutely <laughs> valid. So we had an old, what we've described as a piece of crap, Johnson guitar. Mm -hmm. Do we still have that? I do not have do that, not. no. I think I gave it to my brother. Okay. And I don't know what happened to it after that. Did you write any songs with that guitar? Uh, I did not, no. I don't think I actually... I mean, me and my... Uh, good friend Alex Moen back in the day wrote some songs together, but I cannot, for the life of me, remember how to play them. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I probably used it at that point. I uh -huh. think I may have written some songs with right. him on it. Um, some like du duet song style stuff. But at this point in your life, we could absolutely say this is your old faithful guitar, right? Oh, 100%. Perfect. Yep. This You've is my old faithful. written the majority of the songs that you mm -hmm. perform live, and we'll get back to that in a second, yep. on this guitar. Mm -hmm. Well, that is very cool. Have you done anything? I have Can not, I except for change. Yeah, of course. Oh, all right. I have not done anything but change the strings. Sometimes a little later than needed. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we have an ebony board, and we have a spruce top, yeah, and we have a mahogany back and sides. Yeah, and I love your guitar strap. I do too. I actually got that here. Awesome, because they sell all sorts of guitar accessories, mm -hmm. including straps, coffee mugs. They sell everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna play it later, 
currently, in case anybody just woke up from a coma, we're in a pandemic. Yeah. Uh, and so there's not a lot thank of... You. Thank you for helping me with that. There's there's not a lot of live performances around. No. So I'm guessing you haven't performed solo acoustic for a while. No, I kind of completely fell out of doing that as soon as I joined Camp Comfort. Okay. I've kind of gone completely back into the drumming. Thing. Okay. Perfect segue. This was just easier to bring than a drum kit. Well, so. absolutely. <laughs> and it, it might be kind of fun for you to limber up the guitar yeah. at the end of this. And yeah. hopefully you can manage your way through one of your original songs. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, I think I'm going to play a cover. but Oh, perfect. But it's okay, because well, most people won't know it anyway. That'll so. work, too. <laughs> but, so, how long have we been in the band Camp Comfort? Uh, I think exactly a year... A year, four days ago. <laughs> a year and four days? Yeah. Wow. Or, no, a year, two weeks ago, I forgot. I ended up playing uh, White Wall with these guys early. But, oh, Or, no, okay. no, no, no. That was the 25th. When did I... Oh, yeah, we played the Custer Beacon. That was a fun... <laughs> show not yeah. knowing any of the songs uh and then we played mitchell stafford's birthday the next day oh okay yeah. and those were your first two gigs mm -hmm. a little over a year ago yep. is there an interesting story about how you got in the band camp oh uh, yeah i suppose yeah Had their previous drummer joined your old metal core guitarist <laughs> no no but that would Dang have uh, been interesting yeah. i think he lives in seattle and he streams video games now so oh okay yeah all right <laughs> or somewhere in washington but, sure um, so they had gone through drummers randomly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there ever was a permanent one or if that, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm not certain right. any of those situations where I wasn't in the talks of things at that time. So, um, yeah, they just had to have, there were people that would consistently play with them, mm -hmm. but then they'd have to have people fill in because their schedules didn't meet what it was, blah, blah, blah. And I always told them I can drum. I can totally drum for you guys, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they were skeptical, as was I, but I was just totally saying <laughs> I could. <laughs> Fake it till you I, make exactly, it, because I wanted to do it, and yeah. then I just, you know, made yeah. it up as I went. And uh, it took a while for them to actually let me play with them. I mean, they, because they had drummers that knew the songs were honestly more practiced and better because I hadn't done it in so long. Right. Um, so, I mean, clearly, I would make the same decision as they were at the time. Right. So when I finally got to play with them, they asked if I could play the White Wall Sessions with them as my first gig with them. That's a pretty big yeah. gig. Yeah, I know. And I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I did practice with some headphones to, like, the album. Uh, okay. Some of the songs and stuff. Right. But as soon as I actually started playing with them live, it turns out that they play them differently than the album was done. Oh. Because, just because the album was done, and then, you know, as they progressed musically, they it evolved. Decided, like yeah, exactly. Yeah. And different people were playing different parts, you know what yeah. I mean, for the recording than the actual live music. And, and they respond to the crowd it, sometimes. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So, uh, I was going to do the White Wall Sessions, and that was like two weeks away. Johnny actually asked me to do that, funny enough. And, uh... Then that previous weekend, the day of, I believe it was, a, or the day of or the day before or something, Nevada called me because their drummer for Custer Beacon and for Mitchell's birthday had to drop out last oh. minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they're like, you have to play with us. It's your time to go. And I'm like, all right, sounds great. Uh, and I was like nervous as hell because I like knew like two songs pretty solid to the album which right. like I said is different. Different. Than, yeah, exactly. And then everything else was like a kind of a remembrance of seeing him live so many times and sure. stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so we went out to Custer Beacon and it was a very interesting experience. I did not know the songs. It was very, uh, from my perspective, sloppy uh, <laughs> and uh, confusing. <laughs> but it was a good time and we got through it and then uh, we did it. We did Mitchell's birthday and it was literally a hundred times better the next day, which was positive in my head. Like, oh, right. thank God. <laughs> sure. And then we went and did White Wall Sessions the next weekend, and that came out pretty good. Like I said, that was my third time playing with them. Uh -huh. It was, uh, yeah, I think it came out pretty well. That is a great story. So if you're going to jump in over your head, and you clearly did, mm -hmm. did you at <laughs> least end with the band on every song? Uh, oh, no. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't, I don't remember a part where I guess we just didn't have the chemistry at the time like sure. I didn't I didn't like keep going with a beat like way longer I probably do that sometimes more now sometimes when like <laughs> I can't hear as well through the in-ears have changed that a lot but like sometimes my monitors have been bad or oh, you know okay. just cues for songs or a new right. cover we're doing like I've probably gone an extra like measure or two longer and we always pull it together and it sounds okay sure but I don't think that 
necessarily happened as much as it was just parts like cues of the actual song. Like, oh, sure. You know, part changes and right. then, you know, like uh, going more dynamic down for Johnny to do solos or, you know, stops and stuff sure. like that. Yeah. That was what was really rough at the beginning right. there because I didn't really know what? what they were. And I don't, I'm not like a listen once, like, and got it kind of person. Right. I'm just completely describing my averageness through this whole interview. But, um, <laughs> but that's, a bit, I mean, I wanted to do something and I did it and that's what I'm doing. So it's, it's important to care. be, have less ego in mm -hmm. a man. It's yeah. very important and to understand what you are. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, you have stated, I don't think you'll take offense at this point. You've stated you were not that familiar with the material. Yeah. Did you find that? You, your chops had fallen off as well. Oh, yes, 100%. Yeah, they, I was not the same drummer I was five years previous uh -huh. by any means. Um, but I am getting there, I would say. I feel really good behind a drum kit again. Well, that's good. Uh, so hopefully after a year. So I mean, did, that did, happened a couple months in. but Did that force you to spend a bunch of time woodshedding? Then? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did a lot of that. I haven't done it as much in the last little while, in the last, like, this whole summer. But right. as much just, like, solo practice by myself, which... Mm -hmm. Admittedly, I should. But, um, yeah, in the beginning, I was definitely practicing a sure. whole lot by myself. And just uh, Caleb Britton would come to town, and I would do some small little lessons with him, just, you know, how to sure. make it sound more like a reggae beat and how to emphasize hits and stuff like right. that. And, Excellent teacher. We almost mm -hmm. had him on the show at one point. We're going to have him on yeah, the show. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Yeah, exactly. So those first couple of gigs, did you get to use your own kit? Yeah, I bought a kit previous to even being in the band. Because I was actually planning on getting into drumming again. Okay. And I bought a whole kit. And uh, I definitely bought it in the thoughts that I was going to somehow finagle my way into Camp Comfort. But, <laughs> but I mean, I was going to play with anyone that wanted to play. Sure. So I had already bought a kit and started practicing to try to get my chops back. But, I mean, uh -huh. that was like a month or two maybe before, like in the middle of summer. So I was still busy at work and everything. And like a month or two before I left 445 initially and then started playing with them. So I was still kind of rusty. But. Right. So, but we can totally safely say that you absolutely obnoxiously shoehorned your way into this band <laughs> and bought a kit just to play with these guys. Yeah. You, sir, are an inspiration. Thank you. <laughs> well, dude, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. Right. Have you know ever, how, but I'm going to. Have you ever gotten <laughs> together with, like, Joel Adams, the bassist, mm. and practiced just you and him? See, I have not. I'm. So, this is another funny thing. Uh, let me describe my unconventional, unconventional style of drumming. I follow the lyrics and the lead guitar more than I follow really? <laughs> anything else. Yes. And I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe because in metalcore for four years, that is kind of more of the oh, way that a drummer plays okay. is to the lead parts and to, you know, because it all connects with the, or the rhythm parts, you know, right. like breakdowns and stuff like that. It's all very lead or rhythm guitar mm -hmm. heavy. Um, and the bassist is more of just a follower to <laughs> give it that yeah. feel and make it heavier. Sure. I mean, and that's not necessarily true for every metalcore band, but we were your cut and dry, like, metalcore. You know what I mean? Right. So that is something that I've still been working on. Um, over the last year, though, I've definitely started to lean more toward working with Joel and making sure that, like, my kick drum is at least where it needs to be. Right. he's sure. got chops in these. Right. So... Yeah, I, I am aware that I don't do that, and I have not sat and just practiced with Joel. Sure. Which I definitely should at some point. <laughs> um, but but well, no, I'm I, sorry I, to put you on the spot there, like uh, that. No, 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 it's not, it's not a big deal at all. I'd love to tell everyone. Um, so I actually am always having them turn up Johnny, and it's funny because sound guys are so confused about why I need more lead guitar. <laughs> 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 it's true, dude. He is good. <laughs> if you're going to turn up a guitarist, it should be Johnny. Yeah, and Johnny knows the songs best, too. Anyway, okay. so. Sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Joel knows him perfect, but <laughs> but I do follow Johnny a lot and Nevada and Kevin's vocals. Funny enough, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my cues because I'm like, I, and I, that's also probably part of the whole writing and singing songwriting thing is now vocals are so heavy to my influence of where a song's going and stuff like that. Sure. And you know, you can feel a build up based on you know levels of tone and everything like that. Right. And so. We've got two more Levels things to talk about. Yeah. We got a new toy oh, yeah. for the percussion session of section of Camp Comfort. We need to talk about this because this, kids, is the wave of the future right here. <laughs> yes. Tell us what this is. This is the Elisa Sample Pad Pro. Um, I 
uh, Nevada and Johnny and I, I mean everyone has mentioned that we should get some sort of sampling going. Mm -hmm. We've seen other bands do it. Uh, admittedly, I definitely took this model idea from Danny Delang. Shout out from Flannel, the drummer. Absolutely. As I was telling you earlier. Uh, and yeah, it's just got these pads here that I can put a sample sound into and. I'm not certain how we're going to use it yet, but I know that the, we have some ideas floating around and it w it's just going to be nice to add a little bit more production sure. sound to some of the songs. It'll just bring out the quality of what we're doing. and So, uh, in theory, you could assign a different oh, sound yeah. effect to each of these pads. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? 100%. Yep. Are we going to have a horn? Um, Are we going to have an old obnoxious telephone? <laughs> Now that you're saying it, I want to. That wasn't in the plan. We might have to get another one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get two more. <laughs> but we hope to incorporate that in the near future. Yes. Into Camp Comfort. Mm -hmm. And it was was this your idea solely? Or? Uh, no, not no. at all. Like I had said, they had thrown around the idea okay. of samples and stuff like that. I, we actually had what, uh, in a grave regard, we didn't have sam what were samples, but we had backing tracks. Mm -hmm. So they would play, and you'd have to play along with it, you know, with a click. Sure. And make sure that it's all in the right spot for every song, for your 808s to hit, and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, a little more dynamic than we don't use click tracks live right now um, in Camp Comfort. But uh, I think this is going to be a lot cooler, because now I can just choose where to do it, and I don't have to <laughs> stay exactly. Because then, you know, Johnny can take like a 30-minute solo, and then I can still hit this effect whenever I want instead right. of like, we have to play it exactly like this at this speed so that it comes out exactly right. Because that was kind of hard. Sure. <laughs> I, I said we had two more things to talk about. We actually had three more things okay. to talk about. Has Camp Comfort, since you joined, done any recording and did you play percussion on the Oh, uh, We have not done any recording with me on percussion. Yet, okay. No. All right. We are writing a bunch of songs. We have most of, I think, or at least three quarters of a second album done. We have written or finished a couple and written like two or three more songs I think finished a couple that were there before I was there but redone them or whatever I don't sure. know what they were like before I was there but, right um, and then or it's, I guess Seasons was already pre-written so that was already the way it okay. was okay uh, yeah so we've written a few new ones we need to write a few more and get recording so are soon, these but, songs that you currently do in performance yep we do currently do all the songs we have so finished so you writing. have been practicing these songs oh yes 100% are you Working on it on your own too, trying to come uh, up with drum parts or no, so not necessarily because when I actually like do it with them and mm -hmm. write it with them, like so they have input too, especially when we we're you know right. all together in the studio practicing. But when I'm the one who actually drummed the song initially and we wrote mm -hmm. it to me drumming it, I, I mean it's there. that's how it's going to be. It's there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So right, it, it was a, a, like a lot harder coming in to play songs how they had already been done before. But now moving forward with new stuff, I mean, sure. it's not, it all sticks pretty well when I'm the one who came up with it. Right. Or came up with it with them or they helped me come sure. up with it. You know what I mean? So one more question. Yes. Maybe two or three. I keep yeah. coming up with a question. Got time. The songwriting <laughs> process seems to be rather democratic in Camp Comfort. Mm -hmm. Do you have, are there any cuts that were just written by Zach Conyer? Um, no. 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 Not nope. in the band. Nope, not yet. I'm a year in. I'm just uh, trying to be a part of what they were already establishing. Uh, uh, I mean, I yeah, I can't think of any specific spots sure. where I've done anything that was my idea. Like, oh, let's do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of Johnny writing badass leads. Nevada having a bassist song like a bassist with, you know, his chords and stuff. Right. And then Kevin throwing in, like, stops or, like, little vocal ideas. Johnny doing the same thing, blah, 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 stuff like that. Right. And, yep. Or the Joel trying to write sweet bass parts, which sure. are mostly usually really badass. And then, yeah, me just throwing the drums to it. Just <laughs> yep. giving her hell on the uh -huh. drums. Awesome. So, to the final question, kind of, mm -hmm. I think, I hope, uh, you, you mentioned that you were somewhat rusty on drums a year ago when you started with Camp mm -hmm. Comfort. And you have played primarily with them. Mm -hmm. uh, do you? Would you suspect that you've gotten a little rusty at solo acoustic? <laughs> I would suspect that, but that's okay. <laughs> if the opportunity presented itself, would you take a solo acoustic gig? I would not. Point? I am not practiced for a full gig by okay. any means. No, I can. Sure. I can play a drunk campfire song here and there, but right. Yeah, I'm not uh, set so, up for an acoustic gig. At this <laughs> point in your life, you're quite content to mostly be the drummer for Camp Comfort. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, I look forward to hearing your cover. Uh, yeah. Let me wrap up the show here. Uh, 
Remember my sponsorship with Trask Hay LLC. Large round and square bales. 5150858 for all your cattle feeding needs, Zach. Uh -huh. You know so all about this. I do you need know. a lot of things to feed my cattle. Right, so. sure. And this week, since I hadn't thought of anybody and since we've talked about him a bunch, Haggerty's own Johnny Hastings says change of strengths. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, when you're ready, Mr. Zach Kong. Excellent. a common curse Maybe things get bad before they get worse I don't want to become someone who can't live up to what I already done Don't kill it just to figure it out When it rains it pours and then it runs out I was lying on the bathroom floor And just when I thought I couldn't take no more Well, here it comes Talk of the trailer park. He went whistling through the graveyard. She was looking to raise the dead. And I was a stain on her unmade bed. I found a lover and I lost myself. And now I'm nowhere and she's somewhere else. And all the boys with the brown skinny legs that go on and on. She sees what I say. Here comes the comeback. Ha, 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 ha.